Hey guys, this is Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and although the leaves aren't on the trees yet and there's still a bit of snow on the ground, it's really starting to feel like spring which is making me want to grow some mushrooms outside. So I thought I'd show you a super simple method today for growing mushrooms in a bucket on wood chips and you don't really need any special equipment like a pasteurizer or anything like that. You just need a five gallon bucket, uh, some oyster mushroom grain spawn and some wood chips. So I have this grain spawn here that's been sitting probably way too long, so it's definitely ready to go. I'm also gonna be using some aspen wood chips that I'm gonna pasteurize in a tote, uh, just using hot water from the tap and a little bit of hot water from the stove. And then I'm gonna be using a five gallon bucket that I'm gonna drill a bunch of holes into um, and the mushrooms can colonize inside that bucket and eventually fruit out of those holes. Okay, so here's the bucket that I'm gonna be using to grow the mushrooms in. Um, you can get these buckets or wherever, obviously Home Depot, but it's just a regular five gallon bucket. And I've already um, got some drain holes on the bottom, which allow any kind of excess moisture to drain out. But I'm also gonna go ahead and drill a bunch of holes all around the bucket, um, quarter inch holes, probably every couple inches or so, that will allow it, one, to breathe, and also will allow uh, the mushrooms to eventually fruit from. So I'm gonna ruin the bucket, but it'll be great for growing mushrooms. Okay, so there's my bucket now, full of holes. These holes are gonna allow the mycelium to breathe as it's working its way through the wood chips, but it's also gonna be a spot where uh, the mushrooms can fruit through. And they're obviously not gonna fruit through every single hole. And that quarter inch doesn't look like a lot of room for the, the mushrooms to grow through, but I've seen some of the biggest oyster clusters come out of holes uh, no bigger than that, so it'll be just fine. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and pasteurize our wood chips. And honestly, with just straight aspen wood chips, if you're not adding any supplementation or anything like that, you probably don't even need to pasteurize them. You can probably just soak them and add your spawn and things will likely go just fine without any kind of contamination. But I do like to pasteurize them just because it does give a better chance uh, for the mushrooms to fully grow and eventually fruit. And it also seems to kind of soften the wood chips a little bit and make it easier for the mycelium to work its way through the substrate and eventually fruit that way. So with pasteurizing, you're gonna have a really, really good chance of success, so that's what we're gonna do. But we don't need a big 55 gallon drum or a propane burner or anything like that. I just have a large tote that I'm gonna fill with chips and then fill with uh, hot tap water, just straight from the hot water tank. And then I'm gonna add a few uh, gallons of boiling water from the stove, and that should be enough to get the temperature up to close to around 80 degrees Celsius uh, where the chips are gonna sit and we're gonna leave them overnight and then the next day we're gonna take them out and add them to the bucket once they've cooled and then we can add our spawn as well. Okay, so I've had the wood chips pasteurizing overnight and now they are pre-soaked and pasteurized and ready to go. So I have this spawn here that I'm gonna add to uh, this, the wood chips and I'm gonna put it down in layers. So I'm gonna put down like a thin layer of wood chips and then a little bit of a layer of spawn, then a layer of wood chips and a layer of spawn and put it down kind of like a layer cake throughout the whole bucket until we get right to the top. So typically you want to make sure that you're being kind of clean when you're doing this, but this is uh, old spawn that's been sitting around for a while and uh, we're going to be growing these outside so I'm not too worried about contamination or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, sprinkle in some layers of spawn. Try to make sure that you break it up uh, as much as you can so you don't have big clumps of, of spawn. Um, but yeah, you'll put in a layer of spawn, like that, and then just throw in a layer of wood chips. And every time you put down a layer of wood chips, you want to press it down just so it gets nice and compact. And that'll help the mycelium to jump up and fully colonize uh, all those wood chips. And if your wood chips are really wet, make sure you just squeeze them out really good before you fill up your bucket. Um, but that's why we have drain holes in the bucket so that um, even if they are a little bit too wet, it'll drain out and uh, you'll have the right amount of moisture content in your wood chips.
And you can see that this spawn has been kind of left too long in the bag and it's just a solid chunk of uh, mycelium, really super consolidated. And there's even some fruiting bodies that have started to grow on the grain spawn inside the bag, but that's no big deal. Uh, we'll just break this up and uh, you can use it, especially when you're growing outside like this, you're not too worried about um, you know, chunks of fruiting body going in there um, or if the mycelium has been kind of overgrown, it'll still work out pretty well. Um, as long as it still smells good, smells like nice, healthy oyster mycelium, uh, then you're good to go. Okay, so that's it. Once you get to the top of the bucket, you want to make sure that your last layer is a layer of wood chips. And then just put a lid on top. And it's time to let it colonize. So for this bucket, I ended up using about five pounds of grain spawn. And I'm not entirely sure how many uh, wood chips, but I guess enough to fill a five gallon bucket. Now I'm just gonna put this bucket somewhere where it can colonize. A perfect spot would be the garage or somewhere out of the way where it can colonize for 10 to 14 days and still drain a little bit if it has to. So we're gonna put it away and come back and check it in a couple weeks and it should be ready to put outside and fruit. So normally you wouldn't wanna do this, but because I wanna show you guys, I took the lid off this bucket and it's been over a week now since I inoculated it, the mycelium has started to really work its way through the wood chips and it's starting to get really nice and firm and bind to it. And you can feel it, it's just solid and it's working its way across. So another week or so probably until this thing's fully colonized. And like I said, you, you normally wouldn't want to do this, you just want to leave it, but um, kind of want to take a look for the video and see what it's like. So I'm gonna let this continue to colonize for another week or so, and then uh, should probably be ready to fruit. Okay, so the oyster bucket has been colonizing for a few weeks now, and I hadn't really paid much attention to it, but I looked at it the other day, I just had it in a garage, and it's starting to fruit quite nicely. So I brought it outside, and uh, we're gonna continue to let it fruit through those holes. So blue oyster mushrooms in particular are really sensitive to CO2 concentration. So I brought them outside to fruit them, which is one of the easiest and best places to fruit oyster mushrooms because they'll, you know, there's lots of fresh air and they'll be able to grow into these big clusters with nice large caps. The challenge is to be able to maintain high humidity. So usually when you put these buckets outside, you want to put them in a location where they're kind of out of the wind, uh, maybe in some tall grass or in some trees where they can, you know, stay relatively humid without getting too dried out because if the pin do dry out they will eventually abort and just kind of stop growing or not grow very well so luckily right now it's pretty humid it's been very rainy and cloudy but still I put it in the corner here so it's gonna stay out of the way of a lot of the really heavy winds or any wind really that would kind of dry it out and cause it to grow slowly or abort fruiting altogether now it's also always good to have a spray bottle on hand especially if you can check your bucket every once in a while just to make sure that the caps of the pins aren't drying out too much Alternatively, you can also drape a bag over the bucket to try and maintain that humidity, just you know, opening it up a few times a day um, to make sure that it's getting some, from, some fresh air in there. But uh, that'll really help to maintain the humidity and it'll ensure that your fruits don't dry out. Now once it's past the initial pinning stage, um, the high humidity is a lot less important, but especially when the, the mushrooms are just starting to show up through the bucket, then you're going to want to make sure that um, it stays relatively humid while those mushrooms are growing. So I'm going to continue to let these mushrooms grow for the next few days, and uh, now they'll start to grow really, really quickly, and it won't be long before we're going to be able to harvest some of these mushrooms. Okay, so I think these oyster mushrooms are now ready to harvest. Could probably let them grow a little bit longer, but I don't wanna let them go too long. But you wanna get them just before the, the mushrooms start to curl up. So just before they're ready to drop their spores is a really good time to harvest them. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest uh, these two big clusters behind me, and there's another cluster on the back side of the bucket that I'm gonna continue to let grow. Now for this bucket, once it's all harvested, um, you could just leave it and get a second flush or another option would be to empty out the inside of the bucket and lay it down in a straw bed or in a bed in the garden and get another flush that way. And to harvest them, all I'm gonna do is just take a knife and cut off 
um, the whole cluster in one piece right at the back, right at the hole where they grew from. And it's pretty amazing to imagine that uh, this entire cluster, well, there's two clusters there, but it's pretty amazing to imagine that this entire cluster of oyster mushrooms is growing out of one tiny little quarter inch hole. I don't know what this weighs, but it's probably close to a pound or so of fresh oyster mushrooms growing out of one tiny little quarter inch hole on a five gallon bucket that was nothing but pasteurized aspen wood chips. So yeah, this process is super easy to do. Pretty much anybody can do it at home if you have a bucket, some aspen wood chips, and some grain spawn. So I highly recommend you give it a try. But anyways, I'm gonna go and enjoy these mushrooms. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and we'll see you next time.